Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So here's another deck profile update for you guys. So sorry I've been a little inactive these past couple of weeks. As y'all know, I did get sick with COVID, unfortunately, but I was still able to bring you guys the uh, true Draco deck. But not only that, but I was able to go back to work as soon as I recovered. And yeah, I've just been busy. So yeah, I just haven't had time to really do any deck profiles. And plus, not to mention the fact that we're already in ban list season. Uh, I'm usually less active around this, around any time a ban list is coming up, especially because, you know, I don't want to post a deck find out that something's going to get banned the the next day and yeah that's that's going to be the thing so but at least with some decks that i have like i don't worry about it too much simply because i feel like they're going to be completely unscathed so like guru for example which is actually going to be the deck i'm presenting to you guys today um the only thing that would probably get banned is verite anaconda and honestly i'd be okay with it this deck doesn't really need it so yeah uh i'd be perfectly fine with it but anyway figured i'd show you guys what i got this time around and yeah let's go and get started so, main deck is still 40 cards, starting off with three copies of Guru. So, as y'all know, this guy is a Book of Moon and is also your searcher for the deck. So, yeah, and his ability does become a, a quick effect so long as you have another Subterra card on the field. Next, three Fiendus. Uh, Fiendus is your Omni Negate, and plus she has an ability where she books herself. She can special summon back the Guru if it's in your graveyard. And, of course, one Nemesis Archer to kind of just round up the actual Subterra monsters. Um, basically, she shuffles back a uh, monster your opponent controls that's in defense mode, as long as you control another subterra monster uh, while doing so. And also, if she's destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one subterra monster from your deck and face up or face down defense. So, I've never actually addressed that before, but I figured for those who don't know, never forget that effect. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, next, for our two vanilla, since I am running Dragoon in this deck, one Dark Magician and one Red Eyes Black Dragon. Figured I'd go with the best art. So, yeah. Um, for hand traps, three Ash Blossom. Uh, still really good and really generic. And I decided to main deck my Impermanence in this one because I feel like Impermanence is definitely one of the better hand traps right now. Um, yeah, you, you could argue that Flunderies, you know, basically can dodge it with Book of Moon, but if they don't, but they have to hard draw into Book of Moon to do so. So, yeah, like sometimes they're not always going to be that lucky. It's also really good against the Sword Soul matchup. Uh, and yeah, it's just like Imperm can actually shut down a lot of stuff too. And plus the fact that if you place it in the right column and your opponent activates a spell or trap, not only do you get to negate a monster effect, but you also negate that spell and trap that was in with, well, that's within Imperm's, uh, um, column. So yeah, infinite Imperm is still a pretty good card. So don't underestimate it for any reason. All right. So that pretty much it, that pretty much it said right there for the monsters and our hand traps. Let's go ahead and move on to the spells. Uh, for spells, three Hidden City. I mean, this searches out your Guru. So, yeah, definitely no excuse not to run this at three. Um, I am running one Mystic Mind still simply because, you know, if I lose the dice roll, it's a great going second tool. So just to help you, you know, get yourself established. Of course, you're going to want to get rid of it just later on, especially with Hidden City because Hidden City negates attacks. But again, Mystic Mind is just there so just to kind of like not only force out a negate, it can, and if your opponent really doesn't have a way to respond to it, it guarantees you to, you know, push through your combo. So that's one of the things I like about it. Now, of course, in general, I don't really like to deal with Mystic Mind myself. It's an annoying card. And honestly, if if Imperial Order gets banned, I think this card needs to go too, in my opinion. So, yeah, I'm just going to say that right then and there. But again, I can make do without Mystic Mind. I play Necro Valley on the side still. So, yeah, uh, there's just other options there too. But anyway, moving on. One Terraforman. Uh, three Pot of Prosperity. If you, you don't have this, you could run a Pot of Ixtraf as a budget alternative, but you would you would have to uh, arrange your extra deck around it. So, yeah, like, I just like Prosperity a little bit more because it digs deeper into your deck, and plus you get to choose what you want to banish off of your extra deck. Next, three copies of Red Ice Fusion. I finally got an up, a hollow upgrade with these, so I'm pretty happy with that. One Cave Clash, you know, this basically makes it so... Um, your guru will always be a quick effect so long as you have this out on the field. But it's also got a neat effect where if your subterra monsters do battle damage, uh, you get to recycle one of your subterra cards. So, yeah. Next, one called by the grave, just, you know, for any other hand trap. But in general, like, yeah, it, it's just there to be there, really. And that pretty much rounds up our spells. Moving on to trap cards. Give me one second here. All right, so starting off with the traps now. Got three copies of Solemn Judgment. Two copies of Strike. Uh, I cut it down to one simply because I wanted to, you know, work around my ratios a little bit. So, and again, I, I like Imperm a little bit better because it's more flexible. So that's the only reason. Two Subterra Final Battle. Uh, definitely a broken card. 
and the best floodgates that I felt like were good this format, two copies of There Could Be Only One, two copies of Summon Limit, and of course to get access to our Mystic Mind right away, one copy of Metaverse. Alright, so that's it for the main deck, now moving on to the extra deck. For my extra deck, only running one copy of Dragoon. And of course, I am running double Intest now, simply because I, uh, Dogmatica players are still out there, so I just want to be woefully prepared for that. And of course, one Omega. Uh, one Naturi Exterio, so it's a Waking the Dragon target, basically. Same thing with Ultimate Falcon. Uh, Boral Sword, also Waking the Dragon. And of course, Mega Clops. And then for my uh, for my main Link Monsters, the ones that I actually do use, uh, Verity Anaconda, which again, I barely bring out sometimes. One Giannato Transverser. One Alsa, uh, Nightmare Phoenix, and for my Link once, I decided to go with Link Spider, you know, uh, do occasionally encounter that one Dino deck, one Striker Dragon, and one Relinquished Anima. So, all really good powerhouse ca cards, I would definitely recommend these. And Alsa actually it has come up a couple times in the past, you'd be surprised, especially against the Mirror Match. Yeah, the Mirror Match is just atrocious, so, uh, but overall, it's still a fun deck, I definitely like this. But anyway, moving on to the side deck. Uh, three copies of D-Shifter. I was actually considering main decking this over Imperm, but it's a little situational right now because here's the thing. Um, yeah, it's strong against Tri-Brigade, sort of. But right now, Tri-Brigade has kind of fallen off the radar. And right now, like the only deck that still uses Tri-Brigade at all is uh, Lyrilis Tri-Brigade, or Bird Up, as everyone just calls it. And also, uh, I don't know, like against Sword Soul, it's a little tricky too because... They technically just need to go into their synchro monsters, and it's not like they have any graveyard effects. So, yeah, I'm a little, like, iffy with this card. But, I mean, it's good against the Eldritch matchup, for sure. Like, if you are if you know you're up against Eldritch, you just shotgun them with this, as long as you have no cards in your graveyard. And they can't really do much with their trap cards, and they're not going to risk losing their Golden Lord. So, yeah, Dimension Shifter is a, is a house of a card once it's used properly. So, yeah. Against the Sword Souls, though, I am running three Token Collector, of course. For any other back row heavy strategy, uh, three Cosmic Cyclones as King of the Sky Prison is a thing. And Cosmic Cyclone banishes, not destroys, so that's pretty nice. Um, another good card that I like to play is two copies of Heatwave. I would run three if I had three, but unfortunately I only own the two. So like any deck that, uh, that you know, naturally, pretty much every deck runs effect monsters is a good way to deal with it. And Guru can actually bypass this with the Hidden City effect, so yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. And I mentioned earlier I am running Necro Valley on the side. And to go along with it, one set rotation. Uh, these are mainly if I'm forced to go, if I know I'm going to want to go second, or if I know uh, my opponent's going to want to go first, game three or something, if we go that far. So I figured for the right matchup, Necro Valley is still like a really powerful card. And then to round things up, uh, two copies of Waken the Dragon. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will catch you guys again next time.